Yeah, so look, I, I just want to make a few comments on, you know, w uh, what's Sufism and what's not Sufism. And w when I say Sufism, I mean, I mean Tasawwuf. And I mean nothing but Tasawwuf. Just unplugged, just raw, real talk. Look, because you are gonna, you're going to go around browsing different videos. You're going to watch Eckhart Tolle, you're going to watch Sadhguru, you're going to watch Muji. You're going to Google spirituality, search for spirituality in YouTube, and you're going to come across a lot of different things. So the intention of this video is that, okay, how can you know if it's Sufi or not Sufi or similar to Sufi? So there are levels, okay? There are levels, of course. If you think about it, it makes perfect sense. Some teachings out there are quite sim are, are, are the same as Sufism. Other teachings out there are similar to Sufism. Some teachings are semi-similar, semi-different. Other teachings are quite different from Sufism. And some teachings are completely against or other than Sufism. So anything between the same to completely different, you have all the greats. It's not black and white, guys. I'm sorry, it's not black and white. It's not that... Like this, 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 this. It's, it's, it's not like that. Okay, so if we go through... Okay, if we take, for example, uh, there's the Zen master, Thich Nhat Hanh, uh, who is a Buddhist monk who teaches uh, mindfulness. His teachings are, I would say, very, very similar to Sufism. It's, it, you know, the, 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 the Buddhist type... Why are some Buddhist teachings very similar to Sufism? It, it's, it's mainly because of this emptiness. Uh, Buddhists talk about being empty, uh, non-self, and, and that, that's, you know, quite similar to Fona. Because this, the Sufi path is very much about burning the self. And, you know, the Buddhists have that same kind of thing, that it's not the individual, it's just reality is the way it is. And they, they have this, Buddhists have this sort of, you cure wrong view uh, with, um, with, with, with or sort of your suffering comes from your wrong view, so that you don't see reality the way it is. So when you see reality, you will see that you had a misunderstanding of reality. Um, so kind of deep meditation, truth, wisdom can cure this uh, this wrong view. That that's 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 very sim like it's the same. It's hakika. We say that you come to that place of reality in Sufism where you see things the way they are. Not the way you want them to be. Not the way you think they are good or bad. Just this is the way it is. And when you see things the way they are, there, there is a peace in, in Haq. Because God is truth. And God is peace. Allahu al-Haq. Allahu as-Salam. So, this is very, 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 very it's, it's kind of the same teaching. It's just taught a little bit differently. But, and then they, they, they also have this sort of, they believe in kind of the present moment very much, um, that, that the reality is in the now. And, and on the Sufi path, actually, when you do uh, Salat al-Fati, one thing that Salat al-Fati will produce for you, and this is, this is almost like a mystical secret, but uh, the Salat al-Nabi that the Sufi chants, it produces mindfulness in you. It uses mystical means to draw the energy of mindfulness so you will become extremely mindful. Like you will hear every single word that people say. You will hear your own words and your thoughts and you'll be so in the moment. That's something that... So, so, so mindfulness, it comes on the Sufi path. And it's quite important. It's, it's very important. Um, and then, the, you know, the Buddhists, they have this sort of nice, kind uh, way of speaking to other people. Uh, you, you know, um, they will never say anything bad about religion or try to find common ground. And, and this is also, you know... Is there universality in Sufism? I know many people want to know this. Yes, there is. There is a universality in Tasawwuf, in the Maqam of Ihsan, when you go deeper into Ihsan. Because Prophet Muhammad he's the prophet of all. He didn't come with anything new, he just taught the same as all. His way is for all humanity. Unfortunately, there are many people who represent those teachings that are very other than what Prophet Muhammad taught, but he came for all of humanity. And so there's a tremendous universality uh, in, 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 in this way on deeper levels. Uh, on deeper levels, we only see human beings. We, we, don't, we don't see labels, we don't see any of that. We just see human beings. So, so that, that, that's like uh, Teach Nahan. Okay, if we go into... Uh, and many of the Buddhist teachers, you should know that their teachings are quite similar to Sufism. 
sometimes the Buddhists can talk about like God a little bit, like yeah, but we don't accept God and so on. Then it starts, you know, going astray um, from the la ilaha illallah. But you know, many recognize God as some sort of ultimate truth. Um, is is then then you have Hinduism. So so when we say Hinduism, um, we mean the different spiritual practices in India, most of which are somehow rooted in Vedas, okay? Uh, or Upanishads or, 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 you know, or something like this. So Hinduism, okay. Hinduism is a little bit more tricky because there is a big variety. There are some practices out there on the net that are very, very other than Sufism, that are very ego-centric, and some that are more similar to Sufism. So, for example, if you take... Uh, Advaita Vedanta, like uh, Muji. Have you watched Muji? Some people watch Muji. Muji. Uh, there are actually, I know Sufis who watch Muji. Sufis from West Africa who watch Muji. Muji is uh, is similar is similar to 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 uh, 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 the Sufi way. His his teachings are quite similar. Uh, on some of the non-dual teachings in 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 Sufism, in my opinion. Um, it is, I mean, I mean, Muji, he kind of does, the way he teaches is other than how a Sufi would teach it. He, so we would kind of teach the same thing, but in another way. Uh, because the Sufi travels to Allah and the self, it evaporates on that journey. Uh, whilst the, the Advaita Vedanta, they kind of go through it from um, self-inquiry. Uh, trying to sort of find that divine in you and who is the observer and so on. Now, the Sufi would kind of, many Sufi would kind of sort of probably see it like, if you teach it like Muji, it will still be ego. Kind of like that. That you don't really get to the divine if you teach it from that because it's still ego watching ego. So when you observe is it the Rakib? Is it the Allah? Is it the light of? Uh, is it the light that observes you, or is it you observing you? So, so it's not completely pure. We travel towards Allah. We don't search for ourselves in this way. Uh, we we search for Allah, and the self evaporates. So, so that's why the Sufi is more similar to uh, again the Buddhism. This non-self, non-attachment. The self should just go. There should be no you. Because everything is one being. That there's nothing that is separate. So again, Wahdatul Wujud is very similar to what Tish Nahan would call interconnectedness. So, and that's, that's kind of yoga. You, you are one with everything. The, the, the trees, the plants, the animals, the, the brother there. It's all like your own body. Yes, this, this union is there. But, uh, but, but, but the, 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 where, where it might be a little bit different is how they approach, you know, this, this way. And, uh, and uh, Muji, as Advaita Vedanta, they kind of are searching for the, the true self, essentially, while the Sufi is journeying towards Allah and the self should evaporate. It's kind of, on the ultimate re level, the same reality. It, it, it is the same reality because the inner being is one. But but the the approach there is a, is, is 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 slightly different. I'm not saying it's right or wrong. I'm just saying it's slightly different. We are approach the problem from two different directions. You can say. So that's that. Then we have Eckhart Tolle. Um, I mean, I've not listened a lot to Eckhart Tolle. I just the the, the brief thing I, I saw on him was mindfulness. He seemed to understand mindfulness quite well. Uh, I I mean, um, I I mean anything. Anything about mindfulness, I'm I'm totally like this. I'll tell you, Salat al Fatihi in in the Sufi way produces mindfulness, and some of the most mindful people I've met are Sufis in West Africa. They are they are like they are like crazy. When you think a thought, they can see that you're thinking it, and they are already helping you. And I'm like, but I didn't say anything, but they saw that I was. They are so in the moment. It's it it's beautiful, and and when you are so extremely sort of here. Everything kind of becomes beautiful. You you enjoy everything. Everything tastes better. So um, mindfulness is not maybe a goal on the Sufi path. It's a byproduct. It's a consequence of the journey, kind of. But 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 having mindfulness as your goal is, is, is there's nothing wrong with that. So uh, because mindfulness is reality. That's why I'm not afraid to say okay, mindfulness is good because you're not gonna be in delusion 
if you are, are, are following a kind of mindfulness teaching. That's why I am, I, I am, I'm not against it, and that's in aligned with, with, with the Sufism, you can say. So what about something like um, New Ageism? New Ageism is a little bit more difficult when, when it comes to Sufism, because New, new Ageism is like a, it, it, it tends to, it's a lot of self there. It's, it's a lot of self there. It's a lot of, I want it like this, and therefore I'm going to do it like this. So wh 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 whatever teaching, whatever teaching you have that is dealing a lot with the self, with me, I, me, that then it's starting to go away from Sufism. Uh, so so there's, there's so much this individual. You, you know, the Sufi doesn't worship Allah the way he wants to worship Allah. He worships Allah the way Allah has ordained to worship. There's this non-self. Just reality tells you how, how things are. Not You are projecting your thing on reality. So I'm going to leave it there. What about Sadhguru? Okay, so Sadhguru says some things that are aligned with Sufism, some things that are not. When he talks about knowing, that's aligned with Sufism. When he talks about, you know... Uh, 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 searching is aligned with Sufism. A seeker is known as a murid uh, uh, um, in, 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 in the Sufi way. That's a disciple, a seeker. Uh, and we say that that happens when the heart turns. Um, that, that's seeking. And um, this spiritual motivation, himma, in Sufism, where, where you know, you, you're motivated to do the practices because you want to know, you want to find that ultimate reality. That's aligned. A liberation is aligned. A feeling alive, what Sadhguru says is aligned. That when he talks about, you know, how alive you were when you were a child, this is Deen al Fitra in Sufism, and this is from Hadith. Like, you're the true Deen, the true religion, or Deen al Islam is actually Deen al Fitra. It's what you're born in, and that's when you're a child, because the spirit is new in this body, and you're so lively, and everything tastes so good, and everything is so fun. And then people put doctrine on you. Uh, think about your own life. I remember when I was up till five or six years old, I was the happiest. Then when I started school, uh, depression started because people started trying to control me. They want to control the spirit. So yes, there's this liberation of the spirit. That, 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 that's true. Uh, the self-control, self-mastery he teaches is true. But when Sadhguru starts bashing religion, when he starts bashing God, when he starts claiming that Hinduism is not a religion, that they are not, there's no such thing as Dharma kind of in India, or he starts redefining Dharma, um, you know, and, and other people believe, but Indians don't believe, then, then, he is di then he's deviating from Sufism, then his teaching starts becoming uh, dunyaist, i.e. material. He starts... You, you know, from, if I look at that kind of teaching from Sufi point of view, that would be, um, he, he's very invested in the material world. He wants followers and he wants power and politics and he wants to feed into this nationalist po vibe that is growing in India. We the Indians, we the Indians, we the this, we the that. Ha! There are Sufi teachings, alchemical works that are 38,000 years old from the time of Atlantis, from ancient priest kings. Yeah that are all in Tasawwuf. So if you want to compete on who has the oldest, oldest, you know, the, 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 this is again dualism, you know, the, it's one, it's one, we are all one. Uh, the, the truth is one, the truth is beyond label, it's beyond nationality. It doesn't, it's not owned to anyone. So if you are extremely sincere in seeking and you're meditating in the mountains in India, you might very well see the truth. And, uh, and, and that doesn't own, it's not owned by any label, it's not owned by any uh, cultural, you know, you know, you know, label. So, so that, that would be uh, sort of against Sufism. And what about, you know, Wahhabi Salafis? That's uh, um, Ahlul Zahir, the people of uh, form. Say, not, not very different, they are very interested in dunya, they want followers. So they say, don't, don't follow the Sufi guy, it's shirk, it's, it's bad. Even if the greatest scholars of Islam's history are all Sufis. Imam Jazali, uh, al Jazuli, you know, Hazrat Ibn Arabi, you know, all of these, all of these masters, all of the early, uh, you know, uh, Muslim scholars were Sufis. Because that was how you continued your Islamic education. You learned the fiqh, you learned the tawhid, and you went on to study with the sheikh, tasawwuf. <laughs> so this is it. Sheikh Ahmed Tijani, all of these. They are Hafiz of Quran, they are Muftis, they are they are they are alums. So so they sit there now today, they want followers, they say Sufi bad, follow us, we don't do shirk. 
But the, 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 the sh big shirk you have to be aware about is to worship your nafs. So that's a short note on the Wahhabi Salafis. Do we have any more spiritual teachers? Yeah, but what about the motivational speakers and all of this? Look, this is it, like this. You have to be clear what you want and what is your goal. If you want healing, as I said in the previous video, you listen to someone who heals you, okay, mashallah, you're healed, this is good. This is a true teacher. Don't get addicted to the healing. That's like being addicted to medicine. Heal when you are feeling bad, but then when you are strong, you have to move on, okay? Um, not move on, but you know, you don't eat aspirin all the time for headache every day. When you don't have a headache, you stop the aspirin in the same way, healing. Uh, motivational speakers, if you are demotivated, you listen to what is it? Gary Vaynerchuk, you feel motivated. Okay, that's good. But take it for what it is. Take it for, don't expect them to be more than what they are. So some of these teachers, I listen to them, but I can take them as spiritual entertainment. Some, I don't want to mention names. I take them as spiritual entertainment. I don't take them as a, a, a kind of a master, a master teacher is going to define the religion in 2021. I don't take them as that. So don't start worshipping them as they are deities. If they are spiritual entertainment, take them as that and leave it there. You, you understand? So, so this is very important, you know, and this is kind of, a, a, if I look at Sheikh Ahmed Tijani's teachings, you know, don't claim maqams that are beyond you. Uh, so, and reversely, take people for their maqam, like take them for what they actually are. If it's motivation to work, it's motivation for work. Don't look to him to be your guru to solve all your problems. If it's spiritual entertainment, take it as spiritual entertainment. Don't look at him as your guru to solve all your problems. Kind of like, that's the advice I, 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 I want. But uh, uh, mocking God, mocking religion, mocking other people's tradition, that's, 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 that's not Sufism. Hopefully this is helpful. Assalamu alaikum.